work at our marriage. Pastors, pastoras, if you want a good marriage, a blissful marriage, a happy marriage, an excited marriage, a loving marriage, you walk have to work at it. And walk Amen. in forgiveness. Yes, walk in, walk in <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> walk in forgiveness yeah. and work at it. One of the things I try to do, and sometimes it's very difficult to do. Yeah. I feel like I want to walk, so I'll take this. No, guys, what I decided a few years ago, the word says that uh, it's the washing of the water of the word that cleanses us. Amen. And the Lord looks upon us and he presents us unto himself pure and righteous. And so I made a decision that every day I would endeavor to look at my wife and wash her with the water of the word. And guys, in our mind, if we will daily wash her with the water of the word and how the word sees us and sees her then we also can present to ourself our bride spotless blameless without wrinkle without wrinkle or any such thing so, <laughs> so not with outfit. We 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 leave no room. We leave no room for us to get mad at them or angry with her, because we've washed her with the word, and presented her to us, spotless, blameless, forgiven. Without wrinkles. Amen. So guys, there's no room to get upset at her. Amen. Amen. There's no room to get mad at her because she's blameless and spotless. Because you keep her washed with the water of the word. Amen. And present her to yourself yeah. that way. And so you want a, you want a happy marriage, a happy life? Work at it. Some people say, oh, marriages are made in heaven. So is lightning and thunder. It comes down from heaven. <laughs> yes. If you think marriages are made in heaven and you'll never have a problem, so is lightning and thunder. And it will come to you sometime or another. But if you keep your faith and trust in the Lord and one another... You'll get through it. Yes. The storm will pass. And remember, after the little storm, it's honeymoon time. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to share with you now for just a little bit, and I'll, I'll make this brief. I, I can take, I have a very prophetic flow. So I can open the Bible up and read one verse, and sometimes preach for an hour expounding on it and uh, so forth it's just kind of easy to do the Holy Spirit will bring things to me and I may go down a little path that is not for everybody but just one person needs what I may take 15 minutes to cover sometimes just one person there really needs that but it's not for everybody else it's okay um, but that's, that's the way it is, and that's the way I operate. That's the gift that I have. Uh, but right now, I just want to talk to you about some practical things. Remember those PPTs? Yes. Practical Principles of Truth. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you what happened to us. Uh, uh, let's see, how many years ago now? 20... Um, almost, 30, almost 30 years ago. We were pastoring a church. Well, first of all, <coughs> um, 
in 1985 is when we had already been givers, giving as much as we could, as often as we could, uh, and beginning to see the blessings of, of giving and really, really learning how to give, that it's a lifestyle. It's not just something we do, it's a lifestyle, and it's a form of our worship. Amen. And we began doing that, and in 1985 uh, is when we gave $500 at one time, and I think I shared that maybe last week. In order to do that, we borrowed it to do it, and it, it began blessing. I, I, did, I don't think I shared last week what happened two weeks after we done that. Uh, we, had, we had had, during that time, we had had our first child, and she was two months premature. And so we had a, and we had no insurance, no hospital insurance, and so we had a $10,000 hospital bill as a result of her being two months premature. Although she really had nothing wrong with her, um, and that was a wonderful blessing. Uh, they thought she would be, I, I mean, the day she was born, they thought she was going to weigh about three pounds, and when she was born, she was four pounds, 11 ounces. And nothing wrong with her at all. So she was only in intensive care uh, just for, for temperature. Yeah, just, yeah, just for to body. maintain her body temperature. She was only in intensive care for just a couple days and then moved out into a satellite and then into the regular nursery and, you know, had very little things hooked up to her during that time because there was really nothing wrong with her. But we still had a $10,000 hospital bill and we had already gone to the hospital, signed all the papers, for payments to pay that bill. And we had already done that, and it was several weeks after that that we were in this church service and the Lord spoke to me to give $500 at one time. And so we borrowed the $500 to give it. Two weeks later, we got a letter from the hospital that said all but $26 is forgiven. Just wiped out. I don't know where the $26 came from. <laughs> Out of $10,000, they said, all you owe is $26. And so we gave that testimony the next Sunday morning in church. And after the service, somebody walked up and handed me a check for $26 and said, go, go pay that hospital bill. So we did. And, and that just kind of kept us on the road of giving and, and giving and giving. And we, we kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And I can tell you all kinds of stories about financial blessing that only happen as, as you give. They, they don't happen if you don't give. God's principles don't just work automatically without you working in them. Amen. No more than sowing and reaping in the natural works without you doing it. Yeah. And you that are farmers, you know what I'm talking about. You can look at that field all day long, and you can pray and prophesy over that field all day long. But until you plow that ground and sow a seed, nothing's going to happen. Just the way it is. So we, we started on a road to do that. We was pastoring a church, and, and it was in 19, um, was it 1994, 5, somewhere there. We was pastoring a church, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I will give you ideas and things to do that will generate revenue that will pay for what I call you to do for the ministry. I said, praise God. He said, you'll never have to pass the offering plate in your church to pay for the budget. These other things will pay the budget. Now, we still pass the offering plate. All the time I pastored that church and any church that I've ever pastored, we still pass the offering plate. But that's only so the people have an opportunity to give and learn to be givers and learn to be generous. We've never had to pass the offering plate to meet the budget because of the ideas and things that God has told me to do over the years that generate revenue to meet the budget. We can do other things with that money. Pastors, you can do other things with that money. I'm just going to share with you basically the things that we've done over the years that each one of you pastors 
can take this and implement this where you live in some form or another. I plan for this fellowship, for the cream of the crop to rise to the top, the most entrepreneurial person that would be among us to take the lead on this and do this for our fellowship. And if we do this, we can do whatever we want to do as a fellowship and be able to pay for it. How would that be? Would that, would that be okay? Yeah, we, we can do it. We can have conferences. We can build a school of ministry. Uh, whatever. And the finances will always be there. You, you see, a lot of people, a lot of Christians rely on miracles all of their life. Miracles are wonderful. How I many know when you need a miracle, you need it. And a miracle is great. Right? Yeah. But miracles are not God's best. Miracles are not God's best for you. God's best, God's way, and the kingdom way is that you always live in abundance. Mm -hmm. not, only not only once. There's not a need for a miracle. Oh God, I need this miracle. And I've been there. God, I got this bill to pay. I've got to have God speak to somebody. And God says, I've been speaking to you for many years. That's right. We have a shovel. We have a prayer chapel at one end of our property where we live. And in that prayer chapel, we have, we have some old antique tools that's hanging on one of the walls. I could pull a picture up of it and show you some antique tools hanging on one of the walls and on one of them is this shovel a shovel and it's it's been worn it's a shovel that I used when I was a kid shoveling snow in the winter time and that is hung on the wall and Tab wrote on that shovel the scripture faith can move a mountain and then under that she wrote on there but don't be surprised if God hands you a shovel. In other words, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. So it's not just praying, it's, it's doing, putting into operation. And so, uh, we always passed the plate, but never relied on it just to meet the budget. <coughs> and God gave me an idea. And since then, there's been many ideas God's given me. And a lot of revenue has flowed into our lives personally and into our ministry to do in the kingdom what we've done uh, through real estate. But one of the avenues, channels that God has used was a work program. When I was pastoring that church, we would have people come by wanting to work. Just like you may have at your church. People come by, they want to work for money. They need money, so they want to work. Well, we, we realized over a short time, about half of them didn't really want to work. They just wanted a handout. They just wanted you to give them money. They didn't want to work. But some of them really wanted to work. So I said, Lord, what can we do to put these people to work? And while I'm sharing just this part of it, if you need to get up and get a drink or go to the CR or whatever, just feel free to do so. Uh, what can we do to, to put people to work? And so I'm, I'm driving by this place of business one day, and there was a lot of trash on their parking lot. And of course the people that come by the church wanting to know if, if we had work for them, sometimes they didn't have many skills and different things, so we were limited to what they could do. I'm driving by this place of business, which is a very large corporation uh, in the United States and in Germany, and I'm driving by and I noticed their parking lot, there was a lot of trash all over their parking lot. 
And uh, when I drove by that day, it's like a light switch came on, and the Spirit said, anybody can pick up trash. Right. Anybody that really wants to work can walk around a parking lot with a little broom and dustpan and pick up the trash. So I called the store the next day. I asked to speak to the manager. He then put me in touch with the district manager who had three stores under his supervision. And I talked to him like this work program was already going. At that point, it was just a thought. How many's ever had God give you an idea? Amen. And we didn't act upon that idea. Mm, At this point, this was just a couple days after I'm driving by and the light switched on. Oh, yeah, anybody can pick up trash. We can put people to work picking up trash. So I explained it. I said, I'm driving by your store the other day. There was a lot of trash on the parking lot. Do you have anybody that ever picks up the trash? He said, well, we have a lot sweet truck that comes in, you know, a big sweeper type truck, but he said, we're not really happy with the job they do. I said, well, what if we could physically put somebody on your parking lot every day, pick up that trash, pull your plastic bags out of your trash cans, throw them in the dumpster, put new bags in your trash cans in front of your store. What what did you think about something like that? He said, well, I think I'd like it. When can you start and how much would it be? Well, again, it was just a thought. So I said, <laughs> I said, well, let me get back to you. How many stores do you have? How often would you want it done? Got some information from them. Went to work on putting some figures together. What would we have to pay somebody and so forth and so on. Got back with them. And yes, let's do it. So that was the beginning of a work program. The object of the work program was to put people to work that wanted to work and number two provide a good service at a better price than what somebody else would do it for quality service at a better price now i don't i don't care where you are if you provide a quality service for a lesser price than the other guy guess who's going to get the business the good price that is still quality service. Yes. And so that's what we've offered for over 27 years to any of our clients, which primarily has been one large corporation, but we've also had others along the way. Uh, we've offered quality service for a better price. So he said, yes, I'd like to do that. He told us how many stores and how often he wanted them picked up. Guess who picked up the first store? <laughs> Why did I do it? Because it was my brainchild. It was my baby. I birthed it. So I went around and picked up the trash on the parking lot of the first two or three, I think it was two stores we started with. Yeah, we started with two locations, and we've done that three times a week at each location. Wow. And guess who done it to start? I did. And then you know what i done? Then I found somebody that needed a part-time job that could do that at those two locations three times a week, and I put them to work. Make a long story shorter, then that district manager told another district manager and told another district manager. And before you knew it, we were picking up the trash at 26, 27, 30, 35 locations, three or four times a week, some of them every day, some of them twice a day. So we found people that needed work and put them to work. And then that district manager told somebody else, and that district manager that he told thought of something else they needed done, and they would call and say, um, how about grass cutting? Do you guys do grass cutting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was did your grass cutting? Remember when you said before about the preparation meets the opportunity? Oh. You as a teenager worked as a landscape right. for Brother Brown. Preparation 
meets opportunity and equals success. When I was 16, 17, 18 years old, I worked for a landscaper. So I had the experience. We picked up trash first at two locations three times a week. It grew over the years to 30, 35 locations, some of them every day. And then it went to grass cutting. A district manager called and said, do you guys do grass cutting? In over 30 years of this work program, I never said no. Never said no. Whatever they needed, if I had to do it, I done it until we found somebody that needed work in that area. So one called and said, hey, you guys do grass cutting? Guess what I said? Yeah. Yeah. We can take care of that. We started cutting a couple locations. And then that district manager told another district manager and told another district manager and told another district manager until where we have taken care of 30 to 35 locations of grass cutting and landscaping, planting bushes, trimming bushes, the whole landscaping need for many years. Then somebody called, do you guys do windows? Yes. <laughs> yeah, we can do your windows. It happened every time, whatever it was, that district manager, we, we'd start doing maybe two stores windows. And then we're doing five stores, their windows. And then we're doing 10 stores, their windows. Every time, then they'd call, uh, do you do power washing? <laughs> you know what power washing is? I, uh, gas, gas power washer, high pressure power washer on the, on the concrete. Do you do power washing? Yeah, we can do that. So a lot, lot pick up, grass cutting, windows, power washing. Uh, do you do interior cleaning? Yeah, we can do that. Do you do 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 you do floors where you can scrub the floors? Oh, yes. Yeah, we can do that. Now, after after a while, we had enough people working for us that when they would ask if we could do something, I was able to say yes, and then had somebody to do it. But a lot of it along the way, the first few years along the way, I would do it myself if I had to. Today, if I was at home, today if I had to. Because you're never too good. You're never too good to do what may need to be done. So even today, if I was at home and they would call and say, can you do this? And, and like I could not find anybody to do it, which would not be probable, I'd say, yeah, we can do it. And I'd do it. I'd, I'd figure out a way to do it. If it, was, if it was electrical engineering, I'd figure out a way to do it. Well, <laughs> that wouldn't be the case. But, you know, I would, I would call an electrical engineer. And over the years, then it, it got into pouring concrete, asphalt work. Whoa. Major roof work. Uh, what else have we done? Uh, major tree trimming, cutting trees down. If I can't do it, if we don't already have somebody in the work program that can do it, I call somebody and I subcontract it to another company. And they go, oh, snow plowing. They called one year. Do you guys do snow plowing? Of course, I know you don't know anything about snow plowing here, <laughs> here in the Philippines. It's a big shovel on the front of a truck. Yeah, it's a big plow on the front of a truck, and you yeah. push the snow, and yeah, we can do it. Yes. And I subcontract all of that out to guys that do snow plowing. Anyhow, as a result of this, this work program has continued for over 30 years, and it has been one main channel that God has used to generate revenue for our ministry whether we're pastoring, evangelizing, filling in for a pastor, doing mission work in the Philippines, whatever we have done in ministry for 30 years, this work program and real estate adventures has paid and uh, funded whatever we have done in the ministry. I personally believe that more churches 
worldwide should find and ask God to give them a channel, start something, do something, instead of just relying on donations. You know, I believe our Christian television networks in America shouldn't rely just on donations from other believers. I think they ought to have something going if it's selling advertisement or whatever that will pay for what they're trying to do through Christian television. Because the wealth of the sinner is out there yeah, for the just. Amen. We just need to tap into how God can channel it our direction. So for 30 plus years, the work program and real estate adventures has funded and paid for what we do for the kingdom of God. Amen. Pastors, all you have to do and I know I'm in the Philippines. I know things don't work exactly the same in the Philippines as they do in America. I know that needs are different here than in America. But I also know that if you find someone that has a need and you can meet that need, they are willing to pay for it. So in your local area, where your church is, in your barangay, surely you could implement this work program and find individuals, find corporations, find businesses, restaurants, hotels, shopping malls, whatever it is, and find out what it is they need. What kind of service do they need? And if you can meet their need, you will have business. And then you can run it through your church and put people to work that need a job and you can pay them well for the job they do. Your client is satisfied with your service because you're gonna bring on people that will do quality work and you can do it for a reasonable price because you don't have the overhead that some other companies have that provide services so you can provide quality work at a reasonable price for the corporation and have a profit that goes into your local church and funds what you want to do for the kingdom of God through your local church. It can fund and pay for your new building. It can fund and pay for your expansion. It can fund and pay for your uh, food program that you have at your store, at your uh, church where you're feeding the poor. It could fund the Christian school that you might want to start. It could fund uh, an assisted living facility that maybe you want to start. It can fund anything that God directs you to do for his kingdom. This work program, uh, this idea, this thought, this concept... This concept can work anywhere. It's not going to work exactly the same, maybe, as it has for us in America. But it can work anywhere if you have the right application for where you are. Will it take a little bit of work? Yeah, it will take a little bit of work. But believe me, if you do it, and God's hand is upon it, the blessings of it will far surpass the work. Say, but I don't want to have to deal with that all of my life. Well, you won't have to deal with it all of your life. As it grows, just like it did for us, as it grows, the more it grows, at times there was less that I had to do. When we started it, I was pastoring a church. A few years after it started and it was running and going, I was no longer pastoring a church, and we started traveling to different churches as an itinerant speaker. Well, at that point, it was already running and running smooth. I didn't even have to be home. And it just kept right on going, just as if I was there. Everybody, what we were doing, everybody knew what they were supposed to do. The lawn crews knew what they were supposed to do. The guys that went out and picked up trash every day on the parking lots knew what they were supposed to do. 
the window washer knew his locations, what he's supposed to do. It just went right on working like clockwork, and I wasn't even in town. I was in another state preaching the gospel. Didn't have to worry about the offering that came from that church where I was going because my needs were already met through Amen. the work program. Amen. Um, I always took an honorarium wherever I went, but many times I would leave more at that church than what their offering was. We were at a church just, must have been two years ago now, and uh, ministered for them that morning. I didn't go for an offering, but I, I went. They asked me to preach. After the service, they handed me a check. A little later while we were at dinner, I handed them a check. My check I handed them was about six or seven times more than the check they gave me. And, of course, they were just blessed and, you know. But I could do that because I obeyed what God told me to do. Amen. Pray. Young Icho said, I pray and obey. And I obey. obey. And so along that, along with real estate adventures, we bought houses and fixed them up and then resold them. And bought a house and fixed it up and sold it. We've had rental property. Uh, all of those things have funded and paid for what we do in the ministry. One, one time for, for eight months, we drove 300 miles every weekend to help out a church that did not have a pastor, that was not able to pay us hardly anything. But we were able to do that for over eight months every weekend, drive there, stay in a motel for two or three nights, preach on Sunday, and uh, then go back home. The work program just kept right on going, but we were able to do that because the work program funded what we needed to do in ministry. It didn't make any difference. The, the, the amount they gave us every week for coming there just barely, barely paid the expenses. So obviously, if I had to live on what they gave me and pay all of my bills and so forth, we could not have done that because they only gave us just enough to cover the expenses. And sometimes it didn't even cover the expenses, but I didn't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about what the offering is because my needs are already met. So pastors, I'm just relaying this to you because if you'll, if you'll catch a vision of it, if you're an entrepreneur, you could take this in your local church uh, when we were pastoring a church, people that attended the church actually worked in the work program. It provided jobs for them, and it was a, Tab mentioned it earlier, it was a win-win situation. So, pastor, you could take this, implement this concept in your church based on where you're located and the needs around you, the businesses around you, so forth and so on. Now, some places, you know, if you're out here in a village somewhere and there's no businesses around you, it's going to be harder to implement. So it, it may not work everywhere, but there's a lot of places this will work. Now, where this fellowship is concerned, somebody that can take this, this idea and this concept on behalf of the fellowship to generate revenue for us as a fellowship, to pay for our conferences pay for seminars, pay for our school of ministry, and so forth and so on, uh, it can be focused, especially here in the Valencia, Dumaguete area, there are all kinds of places around here that need services. And it's just a matter of making those contacts, letting them know here's what we can do, you be willing to do it yourself if you have to until we find somebody that can do it and then we put somebody to work. Uh, pay scale and charge scale and everything, of course, won't be the same as in the United States. But I'm very confident that if it's done properly and applied properly, it will not only pay the person that does the work, 
but it will generate extra profit for the fellowship. And of course, eventually, whoever's overseeing that part of it, they're, they're going to need to be paid because I wouldn't expect you to oversee and run. I got a guy at home right now that's overseeing everything and, and runs while I'm gone. Well, guess what? He gets paid. So it would become a paid position eventually for somebody that would oversee it and, and keep keep it running, keep it going, always expanding, looking for some new business, a new client, something else we can do. Uh, just being here the short time we've been here, just this time, thinking more about this to apply it here in the Philippines, I can look around me and, you know, at the motels, around the businesses, and my mind just... I can think of all kinds of things that I'm sure that we could get into and provide them the services that they're already having provided and give them quality service for a better price. Now, they may not switch immediately because they may be loyal to who's been doing it, but there are businesses that don't have anybody doing what we could do. And they'd be right on board if we could meet their need. The need that they have is the key thing. <clears throat> then can we meet that need and do it good quality at a fair price? And guess what? It could generate for all of us in the fellowship for us to be able to do things as a fellowship and help each other as a fellowship and not be a, a burden. And we don't ever want the fellowship to be a burden financially on anybody or any church. We don't ever want that to be. Uh, but we do want to do things for one another and wouldn't it be awesome, not only when, I'll, I'll just use these, these two guys, when Pastor Romeo needs something, Pastor uh, Sabas needs something, I know his name, it just, it went that fast. I'm terrible with names. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, we, we get the word out to everybody, hey, uh, Pastor Romeo it needs something, take a special offering this Sunday. And everybody takes a special offering and, and it goes to them to meet that need. Pastor Sabas needs a, a building built. And everybody gets together and helps and, and builds that building. That, that would be awesome for us to be able to do that. Or manpower. Or, right, or the, the manpower, manpower. To, to do it. Wouldn't it also be just like... We, we call it icing on the cake. Yeah. Is that a saying here? You not only have a cake with no icing, but now you put icing on the cake. It makes it even better. If we could do that, everybody sends an offering. Pastor Romeo's need is met. Everybody gets together and works together. Pastor Sabas's need is met. And at the same time, have funds in the bank to help for those kind of projects. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, yeah that would be awesome. Yeah. If we had the funds in the bank to, when we get the school of ministry going and it's going well, and all of a sudden we need another building because we got more pastors coming than we have room for. And we've got money in the bank to build a, a little dormitory building where pastors can come and sleep and be there during the week while they're being taught. This concept if applied right, could produce that kind of revenue for us to be able to do things like that for the overall fellowship in which every pastor that belongs to it would be blessed and received from it. Because you would be able to come to that school of ministry and go through in-depth teaching and training. You would be able to come to the conferences that this fellowship has and have a place to come and lay your head down at night and sleep, get up the next day, and enjoy whatever we have going on for that day. So, I'm just mentioning that it's not something, I'm, I'm not here in the Philippines. I don't live here full time. Uh, I have been used to coming two or three times a year, and, and I can come more often if necessary. But what that will take 
For you individual pastors, you can do that right where you are. Implement it yourself. For the fellowship, it will take somebody that can come along and say, man, Pastor George, Pastor Bruce, I, I can see that. I, I can do that. I can help get that going, keep it going, and grow it. And uh, again, as I said, that person is going to end up getting paid. They'll get a salary for it because it'll produce it. Once it produces it, then they're going to get paid because they're going to oversee it and keep it going and bear the load of it. How many know that's only right? Yes. right? That's only right. A servant is worthy of his, his pay. And uh, maybe you want some extra work, some part-time work. Hey, you could work in the work program. Maybe you pastor right here in the Dumaguete, Valencia area. Maybe some of your church members need extra work. Guess what? The work program could possibly provide work for some of your church members. It's a win-win situation for everybody. So I just throw that out there. It's nothing we're, we're going to jump into immediately because I go back to the U.S. and eight days or so but pray about that now again on the local level individual church you can take it home and pray about it and start it and apply it next week and if you need any more information or need to pick my brain any more about it I'll be glad to spend time with you and talk to you about it because, Pastor, you could do this to bless your local church. To generate revenue for your local church. Each one of you could do it. So, that's totally up to you. As far as it being done for the fellowship, that's something we have to pursue, pursue and see who might would be here that has that vision and could go with it. But it's workable. That is one way... <clears throat> along with real estate that we have been blessed, wonderfully blessed, and has enabled us to do for the kingdom what we do. I never have to pass an offering plate. I never have to take an offering. I preached in a church Sunday morning. The pastor handed me a seed faith offering after church. Every one of his leaders, what was there, five, six? Five of his leaders, every one of them came up and handed me a seed faith offering. Did I need it? No. But it'll be used right here in the Philippines to help us do what we're doing. I didn't need it. They didn't have to do that. Well, yes, they did. Yeah, right? Uh, yes, actually, they did have to do that. Because a little secret, pastors... If your people aren't tithers and givers, I'll close my eyes when I say it so nobody thinks I'm looking at them. If your people aren't good tithers and givers, it's probably because you are not a big tither or giver. Because you will beget what you are. So I say, no, they didn't have to do that. Yes, that pastor and those leaders, they did have to do that. If they want to be blessed financially, you must get seed in the ground. Period. And for the most part, in America, preachers are some of the worst, poorest givers I've ever seen in my life. And I'm preaching to preachers. Uh-oh. You got to get out of that realm. Amen, amen. You've got to be genius. Uh, it is a genius. It is a genius that has generosity. <coughs> yeah. So that's what I wanted to share with you. I never really shared that so much in the Philippines, uh, but it it'll work. Hallelujah. Pastors, it'll work. Now you know. It really is possible. 
it is really possible here in the Philippines, especially depending on where your church is located. Um, and it certainly is possible for the fellowship to do something like this and generate revenue for us to do things in the kingdom. Uh, how about we want to get together as pastors and leaders in this fellowship and just do something for another church that's not even in our fellowship. Not even a part of us. Except Amen. that we are the body of Christ. And we just decide, hey, we this pastor's got a need over there. We just get together and say, you know, let's just bless that pastor. Let's just help them get that accomplished. And we as a fellowship would have the funds to do that. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes, you know what that's like? That's like going out to the mall and giving money away to people you don't know. That's what that's like. Praise Amen. God. All right. Well, it's 10 after 3. We're supposed to go to 4 o'clock. So I guess I'll preach another message. <laughs> no, not really. Hey, before, before you get out of here, because especially since it's been four years since we've been here, Faces and names, you know, they kind of, wow. I mean, I, I forgot what you called the bathroom. It's been four years since we've been here. I'm thinking, what's the word for bathroom in the Philippines? I, I forgot. And it's the RC. I mean, the CR. You know, I, CR, and I, we, I forgot the, I know, I know how to say thank you in the Philippines. I know I, I know I know how to say it, but what is it? Yeah, Salamat or Salamat Kayo. Um, so some of the words are actually coming back to us now after about a week and a half. But in, in four years, faces and names have just kind of... So we want to get a picture. If you're one of our pastors and leaders here today, uh, actually whether you're a pastor or leader, which pretty much is everybody, we want to get a picture of you and your spouse. If your spouse is here, we want to get a picture of each one of you and your spouse. And then we have your names that you will write down. And we have to do these pictures in order of, of the list so we'll know who, <laughs> whose name goes with what picture. Or we'll be calling uh, Pastor Sabas, Pastor R Romeo, and Pastor Romeo, Pastor Sabas. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that picture right, right there. And it won't, it won't take very long to do this, but as, as we call your name, and we only have a few on here, so we'll call these names as we call them. The rest of you come up and put your name down, and then as we call your name, just go stand right over there, and we'll take a picture. So then we can put pictures with names, and that will help us a lot. See, you only have two faces to remember. We have all of these faces and names to remember. Amen. And uh, when you're as young as we are, it, it sometimes slips away. So we'll do that. And then, Pastor George, do you have anything you want to say to this wonderful group? All right, so after we get your picture, you can consider yourself dismissed. Okay. Or sit around, visit, chat for okay. a little bit, whatever you'd like okay. to do. I so appreciate, hear me very, very carefully. We so appreciate and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. A big thanks to Pastor George, because he's, he's a busy man. And uh, he has things that he does on a regular, routine basis. <laughs> that he has had to change and make arrangements for in order to take care of us while we're here and go to Bohol with us. And he's going to Bacola with us this weekend. And so he's had to rearrange things in his schedule to do that. And we so much appreciate that. So a big, big thank you to Pastor George. A big thank you to each one of you, both last week and this week. Because I know all of you are busy as well. And to take time out of your schedule to be here uh, at the seminar and just, just receive and also give to us, thank you so much.
It is greatly appreciated, and uh, we just look forward to a great time. I'm going to be back in the fall, late October into November, and we'll have a couple seminars at that time. We may try and put together some kind of a little retreat uh, where we can maybe do that couple day thing. And I don't know, find some place around here, a motel, a little resort. Uh, put up tents here in Sister Patty and Pastor June's uh, this area here. You know, I don't know what we'll do, but we're we'll, going to try and put something together where we can have a little couple day retreat where we can spend time together eat breakfast together and have a morning session and, and just saturate and have a good time. Would you like to do that? Yes. In, in the fall. It would be it would be toward the end of October, first of November, somewhere in there that we would do that. And we we'd love, we'd love to, to do that. So we'll, we'll look forward to that. All right, who's our first picture takers? <laughs> 